Well, it's Humbrew Wednesday again. Now I'll do another well, one. Well, it's Humbrew Wednesday, number 26. Six months of Humbrew Wednesdays. You've put up with me for half a year. Haven't missed one yet. Been close to it, but been a bit busy. Normally I pull one out, but uh, she's still warm. Where are we? It's uh, about half nine on Tuesday night. It's dark outside, apart from uh, we've got another thunderstorm rolling in, so you'll probably hear the dogs start barking every time there's a rumble of thunder. The weather has changed. England is back to a traditional British summer. Pissing down the rain. Anyway, on with the brewing news. Well, that's it. There's the brewing news. <clears throat> there is no news. I haven't done anything, as I said last week. It's still too warm. What are we now? Oh, it's 82 Fahrenheit. 20, 28 degrees centigrade. Something like that. Can't see my wing my glasses. Barometer is falling. 1,015 millibars. And 70 percent humidity in here. It was higher than that earlier, about an hour ago, it was 75, I think it's dropping. But, uh, yeah, all I've done is uh, been swatting up really. Um, read through piles of books, uh, well I have been for a long while, I've got a stack of books over here and um, various ones, I don't know whether, if you can get hold of this one, it's an old book I think it was 90, 91. Yeah, 91. It's called the European Bear Almanac. But uh, it does have quite a bit of information where the brewers have been forthcoming with the information. Uh, some of the Belgian brewers are a little bit more elusive on their ingredients. But uh, for instance, here we've got. Uh, Bass Export Pale Ale, ABV 5%, uh, Original Gravity 1048 Ingredients, Pale Ale, Crystal Malts, Challenger, Golden, North Down Hops, Infusion Mash, Top Fermenting Yeast. A um, little bit more information than some books give you. There are some of the recipes where there is actually the percentage of Marisot, you know, the main, the primary malt. Uh, I'm just trying to flip through here and find one. Um, Bit in this unit, it's a quote with on there. Obviously, sort of uh, forthcoming. The brewers have been obviously the beer of that beer's good. I'm drinking this all grain, all grain homebrew. Uh, <clears throat> but this beer is German, there's sort of sections here goes through uh, Belgian, Czechoslovakia, Spain, Scotland, Netherlands, Ireland, Germany, 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 Germany. Germany. Obviously, Germany's got quite a big. Chapter. Even France gets a mention. Finland. England is quite an extensive chapter. Denmark. That's about it. All the primary sort of European countries. Uh, good bit of information there. And obviously he's tasting notes on the bears. Um, probably one you're going to find second hand on Amazon or eBay. Uh, it's only a small book so it shouldn't kill you too much hopefully unless it's one of these ones that's out of print and they think it's worth its weight in gold <coughs> no recipes obviously it just gives you a bare review and the, the base malt ingredients which is handy if you want to clone a particular brew it gives you sort of the direct information uh, another one I've not had a chance to do a great deal of reading on is uh, Michael Jackson, who obviously is no longer with us, but uh, his beer companion. And I've got Sam Colon's Colonial, Colony, uh, Mr. Dogfish Head. This is his enthusiast guide to homebrew beers. I haven't seen this one, a few of his older videos don't make any mention of it, so uh, I don't know when this one, 2006 Quarry Books. Published in the UK by Apple Press. 
But um, this sort of covers some of his sort of basic starting off brewing all grain. Um, a lot of the in here are actually based on cans of extract and ingredients rather than all grain brewing. But this sort of takes you through the yeasts and various alternative ingredients, herbs, spices, what ratios to use for a 19 litre uh, batch of beer. Obviously being American it's also in gallons and ounces and grams as well for us that caught up with the metric system. It also does uh, recipes and food pairings for the beers that you brew as well. So I know uh, Tony Yates was reading a few books there a big while back. But, uh, we've got sort of berry, berry, well I suppose it is a berry, cherry, a berry, Belgian cherry ale. Um, big Mama's a barley wine. The Cran Daddy Braggot, Port Barrel Aged Belgian Brown Ale, Demigoddess Ale, and at the back of the book we've got Indian Brown Ale. Obviously, it's going to be a rumble of thunder in a minute. But uh, yeah, there's food pairings as well, uh, beers for cheeses, and so if you're into food as well as your beer, smoky apple mate. Porter barbecue sauce, ultimate steak ale marinade, witty cilantro mussels, warm pilsner, and spinach salad, zesty blue cheese, and IPA dipping sauce. Are you getting hungry as well as thirsty? That one, if you can find it. It's worth it. Uh, it's an interesting book for any of us brewers if you want to all grain. I suppose you can obviously go on the necessary calculators and uh, take the liquid malt and dry malt extracts and convert them to grains. But, uh, fortunately these books here, I've got about five or six, I've got a free cycle so all they cost me was a ten minute drive in the car to another town just to pick up a guy who was uh, wanting to lighten his shelves. <coughs> So yeah, a few more ideas for me, a few more facts and figures, so uh, it sort of takes some of the hit and miss out of it, obviously again it's down to the taste as well, so, but a uh, useful book, if you can get it, there's tons of, I mean I've got uh, two here, I think I did show them to you, I've got Clan Brews, which is an American book, and uh, the Canberra Real Ale, Brew Your Own Real Ale, um, I think I've said to a few guys, if you need any recipes, I've got umpteen books now on brewing recipes, whether it be partial, mini mash, all grains. Give me a PM, tell me what you want, I'll have a look, see if I've got it, and uh, scan a page and send you an email. Also, I have shot out to a few guys a file, which I've got here. It's sitting on both my computers, so I can email it to you or send it to you via Uvu. I've sent it to Nate, I don't know whether he's got it or not. I did send it to Chubby, I don't know whether it works out, whether the, um, it's obviously it's a PDF Adobe file, so whether the smartphones uh, can translate the file or whatever, I don't know. But uh, if not, send me an email, or PM me with your email, and I'll send you this disc with 640 recipes on it. The information is a bit basic but you just get sort of like the basic beer recipe so obviously you'll have to work out your mash schedules and uh, your, your walk volumes and things and adjust the recipe to cater for the size of your pots and things but uh, it's 640 to chew on and they're a mixture of cans and grains and all grains uh, so yeah if anyone wants a copy of that it's only about a 2 meg file I think or something like that, it's not huge, but uh, 640 recipes is more than you get in most of the books. The only one I'm after I think is the Brew Your Own magazine's 200 recipes which I can't seem to track down in the UK. So if anyone wants to do a trade, <coughs> if they've got a PDF of that, I'm more than happy to swap you 200 recipes for my 640. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, I'll uh, cut over.
and do the quick hop update, see how they're uh, surviving in the swelter and heat we've had for the last few weeks. They are they're old on their own, but uh, they're not as healthy as they were looking. But anyway, have a look, see what do you think. Let me know. Well, hopped up date. They look like they've been taking a bit of a beating in the sun. Some of the leaves are going yellow. We have got uh, the side shoots growing. Still, this one that had the damage snapped off. But the side stems are still growing. But, uh, trying to find some larger pots for these two. They're still all the way up and uh, hooking up wherever they can find and uh, continuing to grow and sort of interlocked with one another. But they're all suffering some heat damage, There's a little bit of discoloration on these leaves. But, uh, Stems don't seem to be thickening up much. There's some more dead leaves there. I don't know whether it's in part because they sort of reached the capacity of the pot. But, uh, still got some new growth on it. And the same on this one. Little sheets coming up. There's some more weeds. We're going to have a look at the other ones in the ground. I've got a load of them going out tomorrow. They're all ready for the person to collect. Fifteen of those going. Uh, wing away through the Volkswagen collection. To Hop Central. Okay. Some of these leaves seem to have got a little bit of colour back into them. But some bindweed in the way. But, uh, I think the growth has slowed down a little bit with this unusually dry spell we've had, which seems to have ceased now, as you can see up in the sky. Somewhere there is the sun. But, uh, we're more back to an English summer looking, although it's still quite warm. But again, we haven't got. Um, massively large leaves like I have from uh, the ones at the house where these came from these were took as root cuttings basically as rhizomes but uh, there are obviously the possibility that there might be two different varieties in the little, little strange little spitter Anyway, that's it for the hops. Well, as you can see, the hops are surviving. There's some side shoots coming off, so whether we will get any uh, flowers this year, we'll get some cones. Um, the ones up at the house aren't doing too well. The, the gardeners went at the ones that are on the border of the property that go through the fence and intertwine. They wrenched them out the other Friday. Um, when I came back on a Wednesday, there's sort of like a 70% loss of uh, of the plant. Um, the one I took a good chunk of root out obviously hasn't grown as well this year. That's going up through a lilac bush and on its own. So uh, obviously, I was hoping I might get a double harvest if they. Uh, I mean, they're not completely decimated, but. Um, there is another one on one that grows in one hedge that didn't produce any cones the last two years has been there. The other one that I've got in the pots, or well, the ones I've planted in the front garden, um, they come from one on the other side of the hedge where they did produce um, a cone the first year, but they weren't as large as the cones that were produced last year. I'm sort of aiming really, because uh, obviously I don't know whether I've got two varieties, three varieties, what they are. I've got no idea whether they're an English hop or a continental hop or a US hop. Uh, all I know is the bloke that lived there before they got kicked out did do a little bit of homebrewing. The only reason I can figure that out is because uh, 
two hydrometers were left in the house. Um, fortunately, unfortunately, he didn't leave me anything else useful. But uh, I got, oh, got two hydrometers out of it when I was clearing the place out originally. But, uh, yeah, it looks like the hedges are going to come out and the fence I've got to take down. So I may lose the plants, um, which is another question I'll ask for any of the hop growers out there with more experienced hop growers. Is um, obviously we're in full season of growing. I'm going to potentially have to uh, cut them out. So if I dig roots out now and plant them in some peat, although they won't obviously have enough growing time, will they survive if I transplant them? Will they die or is it a suck it and see and just try and salvage some roots, bury them in the ground and hope for the best next year sort of thing. And um, if we get some rhizomes next year then uh, I'll split the roots and offer them out to some people who uh, want to have a crack at growing some ops next year because uh, I've got a reasonable sized garden but uh, it's not really geared up for being a garden. It's more of a reclamation yard. Lots and lots of slabs and lots and lots of sheds. <coughs> so there's not a lot of room for flower beds and uh, grass and all the sort of traditional things you'd find in an English country garden. They ain't in mine. Nettles are in my garden. I was going to do a nettle beer. <laughs> but it doesn't keep very long. It's only good for about six weeks, nettle beer. But, uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it, I'm afraid. I haven't got nothing groundbreaking to tell you. I've, as much as I want to crack on with these little malt experiment uh, stroke trial brews in the demijohns, um, it's just too warm. I don't want to sort of Although it's not obviously going to cost me a fortune to do them, uh, it's time and money have them all sitting in here and they all go funky because it's sort of like 28, 30 degrees and um, they don't quite come out of what I was hoping for. So I've, I have put in a quote uh, or a best offer on eBay for a couple of STC1000 type temperature controllers with the two way contact so they'll do a heater and a chiller rather than the other little one I've got, which I did manage to find, which is obviously, that's only got the one one switching circuit just to control a heat or a chiller. Um, so I'm going for the ones with the two circuits. Um, so if I, I'll see if my, my best offer is accepted, I think. Um, so I'm just pending on my offer being accepted or their counter offer being cheap enough. I think he's fact the cheapest one on there and they're all the same controllers unless you sort of plump for the brand of STC 1000s which are about 18, 19 quid um, if you buy them from the UK. So the big blue fridge I've had in previous videos will have one of those whacked into it um, so hopefully I can get one or two fermenting bins in there one go and probably just use a bulb um, overnight. Obviously the temperature drops at the minute I and mean, then I think nighttime temperature is about 17 degrees. Um, so sort of like the bottom end of the nail really. Um, just have to suck it and see and sort of play with it for a couple of days before I do any batches and just get it get it harmonised um, depending on sort of nighttime temperatures. Obviously it looks like the weather is changing, um, we're getting sort of overcast days and it's wetter but I think it's sort of panning out for a week but what happens after that I don't know, it depends on what's going on in the Atlantic. Um, but I don't think we'll, you know, even though it's overcast the temperatures haven't dropped, um, there's no wind, um, so it's still too warm and I'm not sort of going to risk putting 20 three litres, twenty litres of beer in and having it go all funky. I don't know how other people are sort of manage it. I know I think Cheshire Humbrew's got it in his garage which seems to be sort of hanging at twenty two where well, I don't sort of have that luxury of when he got the house um, and the sheds aren't not far from ideal because obviously they're in the sunlight all day, warming up to the high twenties, thirties and then sort of plummeting down to seventeen overnight. Um, and there's certainly no room in the garage. Obviously, there's other sorts of wildlife living out in the country. 
I don't particularly want to have a nice batch of beer sitting in there and then a mouse or a rat chews through the bottom of the fermenter and enjoys my fruits of my labour. And then the Jack Russell will enjoy the fruits of his labour because he'll be the one that eats him. But um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, if you can want any recipes, give me a shout. I've got shit loads. Um, I don't do book reviews, but uh, I've got several here. There are a few sort of beer guide ones which are sort of less up my street which uh, I might sort of punt out on here if anyone's into sort of beer reviewing or beer tasting and or just wants to know a little bit more about the UK bottled scene there's a tear. Obviously I'm more into the sort of beer ingredients and beer methods and I mean, these ones I haven't even looked at them yet here for the serious beer drinker a history of brewing old names I don't know there's a list of books I mean, this one's retailed nineteen nine nine pounds ninety five Welsh beer, the unsung secret. Now, come on, the Welsh do nothing but sing. My maths teacher used to be, well, used to be Welsh. <laughs> he was Welsh. <laughs> I don't think you can get care for it, can you? <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is just sort of brewing history of Britain. <clears throat> I haven't. A chance to go through and there's the Good Beer Guide of Belgium. The Good Bottled Beer Guide by Jeff Evans. A guide to craft brewing. Um, history and heritage of the public house, licensed to sell. And the Good Beer Guide, Belgium and Holland. But, uh, yeah, I haven't sort of gone through all, but some of these I might buff out to some of you guys in the a book mail as opposed to a beer mail. Um, I'll say I've got a few more beer mails I'd like to chuck out to people when I've got some stock to uh, brew, but my uh, stocks are all very near depleted um, with this weather sort of holding up brewing schedules. It's um, pushing things down. I've had to, I've had to um, be forced. Excuse me for uh, having carbonated beer. I've, I've been forced to have 23 bottles of um, German beer. Yeah. Hansen Brau. Halsberg. 5.3%. Marsh Little Pilsner. Very nice when you chill it down. But, um, you know, don't like a gift horse in the mouth, do you? Especially when you've got 20 Humbrew bottles. And a nice beer crate to keep me to go with the already large collection of beer crates I have. Just one of those sort of crosses you have to bear when you work for a beer shop. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's me. I'm still hot. It's still warm, and it's pissing down rain. Right now. Just pretend this. Like it was when I was on holiday in Italy many years ago, where it used to be a nice steaming hot day, and then the rain comes in over the mountains, pisses down, there's a thunderstorm, it all clears, and then it's all nice again. It won't be like that in the morning, that's the only thing. And there aren't lots of nice Italian women in skippy bikinis. Don't find many of them down Hunstanton or Skegness. They're normally big fat heifers eating a bag of chips. Anyway, I'm gonna let you go and watch another Humbrew Wednesday before I sort of turn this into a waffle marathon I have nothing in the script and just say if at first you don't succeed change the recipe and brew it again alright guys I'm going, cheers catch you next week <laughs>